teach to the youth and it gave back to them in an educational way as far as teaching them about their black history. Um, it was a positive joint. It actually kind of gave a message to the kids, letting them know like, I know I can be what I want to be. If I work hard at it, I'll be where I want to be. It was basically, it was installing something, not only in their subconscious mind, but also just giving them something that they can hear that helps them to understand that you can be what you want to be if you put your mind to it. So I think that was a real positive record. So that's definitely a record that would make the cut. The second thing that would make, make the cut would be Jada Kiss Why. Um, I would say Jada Kiss on the Why would definitely make the cut because it raised a lot of political issues and it actually asked a lot of questions that we still do have that are still left unanswered today um, in, the, in the record of Why. Um, there's a lot of people who may not have been paying attention at that time, and I think that um, Jada Kiss raised a lot of awareness to people with that record. Um, then I had to go with Tupac, Dear Mama. I had to respect Tupac, that I always felt that um, that record was so deep for Pop, um, Pop, for Pop to do. Um, he stayed away from the who shot you in this type of record, and he actually paid respect to his mother, so it was like, um, you, you kind of understood what he was going through that, you know, his mother um, was responsible for it. His son, uh, his brother actually being a crap baby or what have you, but at the end of the day, he still had respect for her because of the struggle that she went through in order to, um, you know, still make ends meet at the end of the day, even though she was on drugs or what have you. The fourth joint, I would say Eminem Mockingbird. I'd say Eminem Mockingbird because, um, Eminem Mockingbird would make the cut, it's like, and you, that song actually gave you his story. It explained to you what he was going through as far as his divorce with Kim. Um, it, it gave you how he felt about his daughter, how deeply he felt about Haley. Um, it basically allowed you into his personal life about, um, you know, how Kim was locked up. And he understood what Haley was probably going through, being that he was never home. And he was trying to, his job was to put food on the table for them and things like that. So that song really, really would definitely make the cut because I'm sure it touched a lot of hearts in an emotional way. And last but not least, I have to give at least one lady the cut on on my five cuts. And ladies, I'm gonna have to go with MC Light Paper Fan. It was like that whole when you say you love me, it doesn't matter. It goes through my head. It's just chit chatter. It's like um, like she kept the fellas in check. It was like you can talk about whatever you want to talk about to me, and I hate, you, but. I'm not even weak with what you're talking about, so that's why we definitely make the cut because she kept it. The most hip hop moment that I experienced would be me attending the BH1 Awards with Africa Van Body. Um, the BH1 Hip Hop Awards, I mean, I'm sure that was an incredible moment for everybody that was in the building. I mean, there was Big Daddy Kane rocking the four finger ring. There was Styles P rocking the MCM jackets. There was um, Luke Cam and Remy Ma performing MC Lights Roughneck and Yo Yo. Um, to see all those different eras under one roof and everyone just kind of politicking with each other and building with each other, that was an extremely powerful moment in hip hop for me. It was to actually see all that happen at one time. Whether you're into ultra limited tees and cakes or more hood classic type styles, Miami's got plenty of spots to get you properly geared up. Right now, we're rolling the Aventura Mall 
with Trina, who's going to show us how to get dip Miami style. So Trina, tell us a little bit about fashion in Miami. Like, how can you tell just from looking at a cat that he's rapping in MI? What's the deal, y'all? This is the Boom Back, and we're continuing our journey through the mean streets of Miami. Right now, Night Callers is rolling through with Pitbull, and he's showing us one of the hottest party spots in the MIA crowd. What's good, Pitbull? Well, tell us why you can't come through Miami without stopping through this spot. Okay, well, you've had a chance to party all around the world at this point, so what makes the Miami party stand out from the rest? Like, what is it that Miami's got that the rest of the world hasn't caught up to yet? All right, the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time for Concrete Spit. This is your chance to see how Miami does hip hop for real. We're here with DJ Khaled in the heart of Little Haiti, and he's putting us on some of the illest MCs. DJ Khaled, tell us who we got here. on Star Island, one of my name's most exclusive neighborhoods, home to Shaq, Puff, Sly Sloan, and the man right here, producer extraordinaire Scott Storch. Now Scott, I remember hearing him shout you out on keyboards on the first Roots album. You've been on your serious hip-hop grind for a minute now. Now can you bless us with your personal 10 rules for hip-hop survival? Give us one or two sentence ad-libs to the following topics. The record sales between Kanye and 50 Cent. Kanye and 50 Cent going toe to toe brings excitement in the hip hop world again. Um, the two hip hop geniuses are two powerful people that have two completely different styles and may the best man win. The global expansion of hip hop, especially in Japan. The expansion of our urban hip hop culture in Japan actually breaks barriers and limitations. It allows the Japanese to embrace what hip hop has to give. HELP, Hip Hop Educational Literacy Program. The HELP program is an incredible approach to promote and assist both struggling and advanced students with a different learning approach. 